Hi, everyone. My name is David Beard. I'm the product lead for Daiquiri's SDK and tools. And as you probably know, Daiquiri is a technology company solely focused on enterprise applications that utilize and benefit from augmented reality. We provide both hardware and also software solutions that enable enterprise to deploy augmented reality in the workplace to create augmented reality applications and to integrate their own systems to support AR workflows and processes. So my talk today is actually about what are the use cases that we see demand for, how are we addressing those, and how are we enabling enterprises to deploy them. Um, the good news is that we, being Daiquiri and also the larger AR community, have successfully made the case that there is a role for AR in the enterprise, that it's valuable, that it's measurable, and that it's adaptable to existing workflows and processes. That was a question for many years. So what I'm here to say is that we have successfully answered that, and it then brings on new challenges. But if you're familiar with some of the data, the, the Boeing studies, some of the other work around VW, this is some of our own, that there really are concrete and appreciable improvements available for process time efficiency, reduction in errors, training, uh, improvements in accuracy that arise from the use of augmented reality um, either in a, in a head-worn or a handheld form factor. This is some of our own data. We've been working with Siemens over some uh, turbine assembly cases. And again, what they've seen is it's significantly quicker to perform, more accurate, and actually easier. And I think also the breadth of companies that have been utilizing AR. If you've been in the field for the while, a while, you realize that there are some firms that have used AR for years. Boeing is, is famous for this. A lot of the automotive firms are famous for that. But we're seeing it spread into other industries, other sectors. And there's a growing awareness of AR. And I think also the recognition that it's no longer perceived as a novelty, that they recognize AR as a mode or a method for accomplishing something. And in that way, it becomes part of the enterprise IT portfolio. And then that raises a new challenge for us, and all of us, I think, which is that we need to adapt AR as a native technology within enterprise IT infrastructure, enterprise IT processes, um, and the kinds of workflows that they're using. And so when you're looking at enterprise use cases, each of them is specific to the enterprise and to the workflow that's being performed but they're not necessarily unique. And what we've seen is across the range of use cases, despite the vertical and despite the industry, there are certain use case patterns that have emerged. And so that's something that we've looked at addressing. Um, but to support that, what it means is that we need to adapt augmented reality so that it is capable of interacting with and extending and adding value to existing enterprise IT. So that the tasks that are performed by a workforce on their assets can interact with the systems that currently provide that data, capture that data, verify the workflow, and also report for it. So again, AR needs to become native to enterprise IT, and that's something that we're looking at addressing. So when I talk about use case patterns, there's really four broadly. Um, these are in design cases, which have to do with both design visualization for review, but also design verification cases. Building cases, meaning assembling things, reassembling them, maintaining them, verifying again that the assembly is correct. Also operational cases. These tend to be process driven, meaning that someone is a work, on a work site or in the field, they're performing a set of steps potentially to inspect something, to verify something, uh, to report on the state of something. And those are operational cases. Another that we support is, is what we call retrofitting, and this is really due to some of the capabilities that come with Daiquiri Smart Glasses and our ability to reconstruct geometry and actually derive um, properties from the environment. Retrofitting means that you have an existing assembly or a work environment, and now you need to adapt it or extend it, and you want to visualize that and actually provide an artifact of that. You provide a model of that. So I'll talk about that a little bit as I go forward. But basically, what we've seen is the sweet spot for AR is in the combination of high value assets, capital assets, this is plant and equipment, and the set of workflows that need to be performed on those so that 
the value of the asset is really justifying the investment in AR um, and the skill of the workforce that's being applied. So our answer to this is, is what we call WorkSense. Um, WorkSense is essentially a suite of productivity applications that use augmented reality and address some of the core roles and applications needed to support that workflow. And so you can think of it almost like a Microsoft Office, but using AR and for enterprise, in that each of the applications has a specific role that addresses a specific task or a specific need of a, work, of a use case, and the apps can also be used in combination. So WorkSense relies obviously on Daiquiri hardware. Um, it's actually delivered with Daiquiri smart glasses. It's again, it's a bit like Microsoft Office. It's a native platform application that comes with the smart glasses. And the applications are extendable, and I'll talk about that. We also then enable the uh, WorkSense to integrate with your existing workforce software. This might be rules engines or PLM software, service lifecycle management, enterprise resource management software. And we provide mechanisms and components that enable you to then extend the app into your existing infrastructure or to use to actually extend the app in the runtime, meaning that you can add plugins and components to the application. But quickly, when I talk about um, the suite, this is something that's currently in beta. Um, it's, we have an early access program. We're delivering each of the apps. Uh, they'll go public, I think, at the end of May, early June. Uh, but come by the booth if you're interested, and we can give you a little bit more information about this. Excuse me. So when I talk about the WorkSense apps, like I said, it's a bit like Microsoft Office. So there's five apps, which are show, tag, model, scan, and guide. You'll notice these are very simple descriptions. And what they provide is a basic vocabulary for talking about work use cases. How are they fulfilled, and what is the role of the worker in the use case? So for show, that's a remote expert application. It enables you to show your perspective to somebody else to get assistance. Tag is a way of walking through the work site and actually tagging notes onto things so that you can annotate the work site to inform people of the significance of areas and objects and surfaces in the environment. Model is a way of looking at 3D models in place, in context, accurately positioned uh, for things like space planning, design review, really anything that would rely on a high, high quality model derived typically from a CAD source. Scan is a way of reconstructing your environment. This is where we're actually using volumetric reconstruction and texture mapping to provide a 3D model of what the worker is working on, what they're looking at, what they're interacting with. And guide is a way of delivering step-by-step -step instructions. This is really fundamental. So this is, guide is an application that enables you to set out a, a set of instructions, enable the worker to interact with them so that they're verifying the instruction, they're actually capturing evidence potentially of the work step, and that there's a conditional, you can apply conditional logic to guide so that depending on the state of the workflow or the state of the work piece, they can actually, you can actually design a workflow that is specific to that condition in that setting. So let me show you some examples of this, um, and I think it'll help to clarify. So again, WorkSense is a suite of applications. They're part of the Daiquiri platform. They're delivered with the Daiquiri smart glasses, and they're available to anybody who buys the glasses. You can upgrade using a pro subscription, which extends some of the functionality and the capabilities for integrating with your existing IT. So again, this is show. Show is remote expert. I'm sharing my point of view with somebody. And the back end of it, the expert side, is a bit like a call center application. So they can see what you're looking at. They can provide annotations. And they can actually talk to you as you're doing the work. Got it. Now, tag is an application that actually enables you to annotate your environment, right? So you can use rich media tags that are developed in a web application on the back end that you can then go and place at specific points in the environment. So you're adding notes or you're adding tags into the work environment. You can save those 
and then deliver them to somebody else. So if I had a workflow that occurred in this room and I wanted to notify somebody that a given part maybe needed maintenance in the future, I can apply a tag to that. It'll be seen specifically on that part in the area and somebody else can then utilize it. Model is a way of consuming and delivering and presenting uh, high quality CAD models. This is currently integrated with Autodesk BIM 360. So it, it handles a lot of the processing of the model, the ability to um, deliver it through the glasses, to render it properly, um, and also to do some basic animation. Scan, again, is the volumetric reconstruction application. So what this is doing is it's generating a 3D mesh of the surfaces that you're looking at, and then it actually maps the texture, or the appearance of the surface onto the mesh. What this is popular for is actually uh, what we call change detection applications. So we can compare these scans against each other to understand what has changed in the environment since the last scan and what the current scan changes relative to the previous one. So what has been removed and what has been added, basically. Guide, again, is for step-by-step -step instructions. So Guide provides actually a, a set of tools that you can use to author the instructions, apply some basic conditional logic, add controls that allow the user to interact with them in order to capture things like confirmation, attestation artifacts. And again, this is a rich media authoring interface. So you can add video, images, um, and really the full range of what you would expect from like hypertext. So again, these are all applications that come with Daiquiri smart glasses. Currently, they're in EAP, which is a beta program. The apps currently are independent, meaning that each of them functions independently. What we're moving towards is the ability to actually merge the results of the apps or merge the apps onto each other. What that'll mean is that you can use a remote expert session in the context of a tag session. So if I'm walking through the environment, looking at annotations, I need to understand the significance of something, I can call it a remote expert and actually have them interact with me in a tag session or interact with me as I'm going through a guided workflow of some sort. So in supporting all of this, we have a, a range of partners that we worked with in the past that have been very excited to participate in WorkSense. Uh, what WorkSense is providing for ISVs is really a framework that they can integrate their existing um, solutions into, basically. Whether this is coming from data or it's a native application that they would like to present through WorkSense, WorkSense really provides a set of UI conventions, a development framework, a set of APIs, um, and a consistent sort of runtime environment that they can integrate and adapt their existing solutions into. So really there's two ways of extending WorkSense. One is that you actually add components into the WorkSense app and you can kind of skin the app and add functionality to it um, and then that's delivered onto the device. The other way is what we call a connector. A connector is like a bridge. So a connector is added into a WorkSense app and it enables you to then reach out into Autodesk Forge or the IBM Cloud or into SAP services or something like that. So you can think of it as a, a way of connecting into third party platforms. Um, and then we also work with a range of systems integrators and other parties that it can help you customize these applications and deploy them. So we're very excited about WorkSense. We're, we'll have some people at the booth who are talking about this. Um, if you're interested in opportunities for integrating your own solutions or deploying WorkSense and understanding how to customize that, please talk to me. If you're interested in deploying WorkSense for an existing use case, uh, we can put you in touch with the right people. But thank you. Is there, are there any questions? You should see some here on the screen from uh, Slido. So what is the benefit of your hardware versus cross-platform hardware? So typically, you get a performance advantage for the fact that it's all dedicated hardware. Uh, secondly, it's much easier to manage for an enterprise. What, what enterprise want, essentially, is, a, is considered as a fleet of devices almost, where they can buy a single device with a consistent runtime and a consistent sort of maintenance pattern or maintenance model and just deploy those to the workforce. One of the interesting things that we've seen is that um, with a lot of, especially industrial enterprises, what they'd like to do is just buy many units of the device and deploy them as, um, what would you say, almost anonymously. They want the worker to be able to come up, just pick up any device, put it on, start it up, and run that, basically provision the, the device for anybody on a sort of automated fashion. So, it's actually beneficial for the enterprise that there's, there's just a single consistent piece of hardware. It's the same reason that they buy a single model of a laptop or a single model of a desktop, just easier. 
Uh, how portable is the enterprise data with Daiquiri both getting in, getting it in for use and getting it out later? So we don't do anything, we don't compel you to reformat or change your data, right? Really what we're doing, a connector is a design pattern. You can think of it this way, that it has a client that connects to the data, it has a, a set of a logic that transforms the data and reformats it, and then it has an importer that ingests it into Daiquiri, or into the Daiquiri Smart Class runtime, um, or into the WorkSense app. So in that way, it's, it's not doing anything to adulterate the data or to compel you to change your data schema. So I think that to answer that question is we really don't compel you to do anything that's going to compromise or complicate your handling of data. Uh, is Siemens basically using guide features? Yes. So Siemens has been a long time um, partner of ours and was one of the early parties to really start understanding the value of Guide. They have a lot of use cases for it um, and have actually been very helpful in helping us sort of refine and, and um, define what Guide provides. Are you integrated into Unreal VR? No, not currently, but that's a good question. Any other engines? Or any other? It's really what we use is Unity. Um, part of my role is looking at other engines, but no, currently we, we don't. I'd, I'd love to talk to whoever's interested in that. Uh, we do also provide a native SDK, and the native SDK is a C++ SDK. It's really meant for low-level integration of porting work. It's not an application framework. So, but that's what someone could use. If you were interested in porting Unreal, that's, you would use our native SDK. What are, but were stats you showed on slide two? Um, these are probably the training, ask me about this later, uh, but basically the slide two is a very high-level slide, and essentially just saying things can be performed more quickly, more accurately, um, and really with less rework or less error. And real quick on that, all the presentations will be recorded and available on YouTube. Yeah. So if you want to review them. I think, are the decks available as well? Uh, I don't know. It might be up to you, but. Yeah, do if you're interested, but follow up on that one. Do you have a lease option? Yes, we do. That's an, <laughs> it's funny you ask that question. So one of the things that we've realized that's very attractive for enterprise is the ability to essentially acquire Daiquiri Smart Glasses and the WorkSense solution um, as an operating expense. It's really kind of an accounting benefit. And so either you're buying the glasses in which you own them and they're now a capital expense, or you're leasing them or subscribing to the glasses in which they become an operating expense. There's a little more flexibility in that and it also takes the burden off of the enterprise in actually maintaining all of the, the hardware. So they like the leasing option. I think for all of us beyond Daiquiri, that's probably gonna be an area of growth, right? Because we're seeing a lot of demand for that. Um, do you have IP in this space? Yes, we have a lot of IP in this space. Uh, can you tell us more about your developer program? So we're really kind of revamping the developer program, to be honest. This is one of the reasons I'd come on to Daiquiri. Um, what we're going to do is the developer program currently is embodied in what we call VXU. It's a Unity extension that you can use to build apps. But what I'm developing is an ISV program. So if you're interested in adding value to Daiquiri Smart Glasses or adding value to WorkSense, if you have an existing application or solution or you're thinking of something, come and talk to me and we have options for how you can, you can do that. Um, do the performance studies compare beginners or experts? Another good question. So there are studies on the range. I think part of the assumption, or one of the assumptions earlier on was that AR, and you see the same with VR, was going to be primarily valuable because you would take novices and train them to do something. And there is a role for that. But what we're actually seeing is a lot of interest and utilization of AR for skilled workers who already know a workflow. And that what's interesting about this is, let's say you have, they're performing a relatively complicated set of tasks. And in the current work environment, that task may change frequently. It may change every other week, every month, seasonally, whatever. So the worker knows 80% of it, but they need to relearn 20% of it. This is of huge value to them because what they'll do is they can take Daiquiri Smart Glasses, perform the workflow, put on the glasses for the 20% they don't know, learn that, and then go back into their traditional workflow. So we're actually seeing a lot of demand for AR for skilled workforces. When I talk about the conjunction of high value assets and high value tasks, that's what I'm talking about. It's people who are highly skilled working on a very valuable process or piece of machinery and using AR to really accentuate a skilled worker. Um, do the performance, how much was invested in the product and how long it took to build? A lot of money went into it and um, a couple of years. I mean, it's an ongoing process. As you know, Daiquiri originally developed the Daiquiri um, smart helmet. We realized there was probably a better market for the Daiquiri glasses. That's been, how many years has this been? 
Okay, so it's been in the market for over a year. It's been under development for several years. Um, and we have, as you probably know if you're aware of Daiquiri, we have a science and engineering group which works out of Vienna. We have other engineering groups that are out of um, Dublin. We're also in LA. And we're also in the UK where we have optics groups and also our mechanical engineering group. So we have a pretty heavy investment in both the hardware and software side, and we've been doing this for a while. So I think we're pretty qualified to talk about it. Thank you.